So guys, for the CPU, I chose an Intel Core i3-3225. This is a great i3. This is the best i3 in my opinion. Um, it will score you guys around $136, but it really does the job. It's got Intel's HD 4000 graphics and hyperthreading, which means this computer will read it as a 4-core CPU instead of a 2-core, which is a great feature that Intel did. That really did step up their game. As you can see, it's clocked at 3.3 GHz and does everything I needed to do. In fact, I'm doing video editing right now and it's working just how it should. So that's pretty much it for the CPU. And now we're going to move on to the motherboard itself. So we have the Gigabyte B75M D3H board, of course by Gigabyte it's an ATI board with an 1155 Intel socket, so it's IV and Sandy Bridge ready right out of the box. Speaking of the box, let's take a closer look, open it up and see what we get inside. As we can see we have some installation drivers and some boarding manuals, we have our SATA, our back panel, IO shield and whatnot. Anyway, so as we take it out of its protective anti-statical bag, let's talk a little bit about it. This board is PCI Express 3.0 ready, SATA 3 which is 6 gigabits per second, it's got support for 6 SATA, USB 3.0 and 4 DIMMs of RAM which is really handy. It's got a B75 chipset and 1155 socket which is a great feature and it works really well with any Intel processor. Uh, well most of them I should say. So, should say. As you can see it's PCI Express 3.0 ready, ERP ready. So we'll take a look at the back panel, as we can see VGA, DVI, we have HDMI, USB 3.0, Gigabit LAN, you need to install some drivers. We have USB 2.0, audio in and audio out, all that good stuff. So there's a closer look at the heatsink. The only downside with this board, as we can see, we have side of 6 gigabits per second. Moving back onto the heatsink, it's really dodgy, it's tiny, and it's the only one besides from the Intel Core i3 cooler fan. Other than that, it's a fantastic board. For $90, this is the best option you can get for a Hackintosh Gigabyte board. So, yeah. So guys, moving on to the RAM, we're going to be using Corsair Vengeance RAM. Corsair is a great brand. This is 4 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, 1600 megahertz RAM, which is a great way. And for $42, it is quite expensive, but it is a good deal. Although, if you don't have the money to spend that, you can also have the $29 option, which is King's Max Low Profile 4 gigabytes DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM. So this is the RAM I'm using, and I thought, why not? We'll go ahead and install it, pull the tabs back, line it up click down it only goes in one way so it's really simple and an easy process and it's nothing real to worry about so guys moving on to the power supply i'm using a thermal take 430 watt power supply this is a non-module power supply so things do get messy around here but if you guys are uh, have a better power supply in mind such as this one or many other ones go ahead and do that but i do really recommend the corsair 430 watt power supply they make the best power supplies uh, but thermal take is not a bad way to go. In fact, that's what I'm currently using. And any power supply should do the job as long as it's 400 watts or above. So guys, when it comes to CD-ROMs, you guys really cannot go. Whatever one looks pretty or whatever, I don't really care. Just pick anyone. Anyone should do the job as long as it's got SATA or uh, whatever IDE, whatever your computer uses. But this is just the standard LG one. I use an ASUS or an ASUS depending on where you are. I don't care. But anyone should do the job. So guys, moving on to the hard drive, I have a Western Digital Caviar Green. It's a 1TB. This is my main drive where I store all my videos and whatnot. I also have one Western Digital Caviar Blue, which is 500GB and 16MB of cache. The other one has 32 if I didn't mention. But that's pretty much just a standard hard drive. You pick it up for $60. You can find it cheaper, but this is pretty much optional for any build. So guys, next up is the 450 megabits TP-Link Store Band Express card. This is a great card. It's going to get the best out of your Wi-Fi and the best out of your router. I really do like this card. It works with PCI Express 3.0. As you can see, it's got three antennas, but I personally use Gigabit Ethernet because it's a much more stable connection and faster. But however, if you guys want wireless, this is by far the way to go for $36. So guys, when it comes to the chassis or the case, you guys really cannot go wrong. Whatever one looks pretty or whatever you guys want, it doesn't matter. This is a Cooler Master 430 case and it does look really nice. Cable management works well and I just want to say how freaking good this computer looks. I really want this computer. I stole this image off the internet, but I really want it. Um, I probably won't get that successful. But anyway, um, if I can't get that, I'll get something like this. But the case doesn't really matter at all, guys. But whatever one looks cool, it's really simple. They all do the same thing. So when it comes to case-wise, it's all up to you. So guys, I wanted to say a big thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to hit the like button. I just want to say the subtotal was $440. 
Um, I really hope this goes well for you and you guys find yourself more in the Hackintosh community.